another really important thing is yeah, making sure that you got everything tightened up before you turn off, turn up that, pump that pressure, yo. I've been quite lucky, but yeah, I've heard, I've heard some pretty crazy stories about, you know, things not being tightened up or the hoses blowing out because you've got a nice mud kink in it and it's, um, you know, pierce the, pierce the hose. So yeah, just another most very important thing is to check, um, yeah, all, all your all your fittings. Make sure everything's nice and tight, yo, because you are under pressure. Not not sure how much pressure, but you're always under pressure, yo. Make sure your pressure's pretty much turned off. That's what I like to do anyways. This wind is absolutely beautiful today. We won't even. Just do a couple of testers, which is always good. Pretty much. I don't think we're gonna have to do much more than that. Here we are, Monday, Tuesday. Um, I went through, I wasn't here all day. I had the Jewel Us convention to go to yesterday. Uh, so I'm all ready to go. Let's do it. Adjusting your clean shot. Yeah. Just, you know, sometimes the pressure will will stop the actual um, valve. Your valve from going any further. So you might think that you know you've got it all the way. Um, you don't have it all the, all the way, but still sometimes you need to go that little bit further because it's still spinning. So. Good, good thing to do. Just give it a bit of a spray, and then that way it, it releases the pressure and lets you wind it down or in a bit more, should I say? That's pretty good with what we're doing there. And I'll just have a bit of a talk about the tip, why I choose the tips that I do when I'm spraying the surfaces that I am, and we'll have a quick rundown on the pressure. So how I like to pretty much. Uh, dial in my pressure to make sure it's 100 percent so we've got no train tracks it's not going on too thick it's not going on too um, sparingly too light uh, so you've always got that happy medium you don't want to be pumping it on so much um, but yeah it, it all comes down to pretty much 
when I am working out what tip I'm putting in. So with this one, we're doing weatherboards. It's really windy, uh, especially with the compressed fibro weatherboards that we are doing. You don't need to put it on heavy. So yeah, just a nice light one. That's why I am running the 410 on this. So I can pretty much get the whole board in one, or one and a half boards. Um, so what I like to do, I'll be, you know, I'll be getting sort of it to one fan will probably get me to about there. So I get the face and then the under edge and then back to that one. So um, that's the way I sort of like the dial it in. But it all pretty much comes down to the substrate, the surface and the conditions with you are spraying. So obviously if it was low wind today, I would probably opted for like a a 516 or something like that because I could have moved a bit quicker. While I've got a lot of wind around, we do want to eliminate as much overspray. So the more that's going to be obviously pumping out, the more overspray you're going to get from that as well. And the bigger the tip, it, the more overspray as well also. So yeah, always comes down to the temperature um, and the substrate. If you're painting, you know, steel garage doors or something like that, uh, you know, they usually a lot colder than what timber will be as well so you know you've got to put it on a lot lighter because it usually doesn't dry as quick it settles on top more than soaking into your timber boards but yeah it's usually a lot colder as well so you always want to go for a finer tip which isn't putting so much on then you know making it a nice heavy coat and you're just going to you know cause dramas with runs and everything like that as well so yeah just because it's a bigger tip doesn't mean you're always going to get through the job quicker it's working out what suits you for what you are doing and i'll quickly just give you a rundown over here on this nice little bit of board dialing it in i always get it all the time sorry sun's in my eyes i'm just going to put on my sunny um, so i get a lot of questions about what pressure do i run um, my spray gun when i'm doing you know different materials on different surfaces so what i always like to say I always pretty much say, once you've eliminated your tailing, that's when you know you've got your right pressure. There's no point setting a pressure at, you know, 1200 PSI because, you know, the guy the day before used the same material, exactly the same application, everything like that, but he might be in, you know, a place where the conditions are a lot colder. So the paint might be colder in the tin. So that way your pressure will vary from state to state from the conditions that you're in and where you are that has a lot to do with your pressures you know i can be one day i can have it at you know 1600 psi running exactly the same setup and then the next day it might be you know 10 degrees colder the paint's been left out overnight or something like that so even the paint's colder and i might have to you know raise it up to 2000 psi so there is no set pressure for what you want to spray or what you are spraying with. It all comes down to just learning your materials, the products and everything like that. So yeah, tuning it in is quick and easy. It's pretty much, I'll come over here, I'll turn my pressure down. So I've got it probably down to 900 PSI or something like that. I have got the... Um, Hold on, wait for the pressure to sort of... Well, I've even got it down too low. It won't even open or close the clean shot. It won't even open or close the clean shot. So, fun fact, the clean shot needs at least 1,100 PSI to actually open. There you go. I'm not even going to get it. Yeah, I'm not even going to get tailing on this. So, for me, um, you know, I wouldn't run it at this pressure. It's just not putting out enough, but I'll just amp it up just that little bit more. But yeah, I really did want to show you the tailing and everything like that also. But yeah, you know how you've got the train tracks on each side? So if I spray it like this, and it'll have the lines on each side like that, you know that your pressure is too low. So just notch it up, give it another spray. Once you get that nice, even, finish but then you've eliminated the train tracks on each side and then you get a nice mist yeah mist anyway.
in my quotes I always say sand before and between my coats. So this is what we do. hours and hours taping up everything getting everything 100% on the boards and then to lay down your coats and then to come back through um, and to demask everything it's just yeah pretty much you're revealing um, your work of what you've done you're highlighting everything should I say is that 